Charles Soule continues the rebel hero's journey into the great unknown, wonderfully tying it into the High Republic story beats within the hill and the cataclysm that destroyed the hyperspace travel in that era. Soule really made this story feel like an old sci-fi serial. You know, with the mysterious ruined city floating through space on an asteroid, the mythical convoy lost in space, and giant robot golems that attack the heroes when they land in this city. It's all classic sci-fi stuff that originally inspired a lot of Star Wars in the first place, so getting to kind of come back round full circle to that is just wonderful. I'm also looking forward to seeing how maybe this ties into Ajax Sigma and his droid resistance. Now, the droids are part of the Nihil, but they could also be part of Ajax droid resistance being that he was from that era, that High Republic era, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that all ties together and how Saul goes about tying all of this stuff together with that storyline. Andreas Janola joins the book once again from the High Republic series, which is fitting being how much the story is tied to the High Republic. I really love how Andreas designs their characters, especially around the face and the facial structure, since you can always tell which emotion the character is feeling at any given moment. Matching Soul's sci-fi serial writing, I love some of the convoy designs this issue. We briefly see it there at the end, and I like that the big ships feel like the huge kit-bashed models you'd see in the Star Wars original trilogy, like all the ships being made out of different model pieces and that feels like what this is. Even some of the smaller ships like the one the heroes end up on at the end adapted familiar things like TIE fighter wing parts into their designs to make it sort of look like a fish that's swimming through space and I like that it even had a tail ending which was really quite cool and really unique and kind of sets it apart from every other ship we've seen in the series so far. Star Wars issue 30 was a fun continuation of the adventures of Luke, Lando, Leia and their friends, connecting the High Republic's lore with the story in some fun ways as we explore the long lost Kazarat convoy. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Star Wars issue 30 heads to no space, where the Skyfarer finds itself confronted by a domed piece of rock. Lando tells the crew that he's been around the galaxy and then some and never seen anything like this, as Luke feels the Force is very distant from this place, meaning there's probably not much alive on the rock. Chewie and Holdo decide that it's time to leave, taking the ship into hyperspace, however they don't go anywhere. Lando thinks that it's got to do with the path engine they hooked up to the engine of the Skyfarer, checking on the glowing device and deciding to disconnect it and see if it fixes the problem. To do so, the Skyfarer must set down on the rock and switch off, giving Luke and Lando a close-up look at the edge of the force field around the rock, with Lando thinking that it makes quite the view. Lando thinks that one wrong step, however, and they could fall to their death, making Cloud City look decent. However, thanks to his death-defying experience on Cloud City, Luke thinks is anything but decent. The heroes all head into a destroyed building, as Holdo thinks the path engine they have is connected to the convoy's disappearance, and it brought them there for a reason, meaning that they should look around. Suddenly a small child in a spacesuit appears, asking if they have any flavours. Lando thinks the child wants to eat them, reminding him to tell Luke about the white worm scrum rats of Corellia. The kid asks for some new flavours, revealing that he's an older child so he gets to eat the same old flavours over and over. Leia gives the boy some ration sticks, which he snatches from her hand and devours. He reveals that this place was once important and there isn't much in no space, but the really older people talk about a place that has lots of different things. Suddenly he hears something, sealing his helmet and telling the heroes that they need to hide. The kid runs off and Luke can sense that the boy is terrified and doesn't know where he's going. He tries to use the force to help get the kid away from the edge that he's running towards but he jumps off, shocking Luke. The kid however has a jetpack, rocketing away from the heroes as Lando suggests that they follow suit and head back to the ship and get out of there. Luke agrees, heading back through the ruined city only to find the ship surrounded by giant droids. Suddenly Luke is attacked by one of these robots, but the force quickens his dodge, letting him ignite his lightsaber to fight the being. Chewie and the others fight more droids that begin to surround them, but the heavy armor of the droids prevents their blaster bolts from doing any damage. The heroes decide to flee, wanting to find a place to regroup, but Holdo asks Leia where they are meant to go, since they are trapped. The heroes are backed up to the edge of the rock, as Lando asks if Lobot could maybe use the Trawak language to talk to the robots, since they seem ancient and they might understand it. Lobo does it and stops the robots dead in their tracks as a ship appears behind the heroes. The heroes decide to take a 
chance with the ship, but the ship's ramp is a little too far off for them to jump across into open space. Luke knows that he could make it, but he's reminded by Holdo that they don't all have Jedi powers like he does. With no choice, the heroes try and leap across, and Lando follows after them, but his foot gets snagged in a root, causing him to trip and fall into open space. Luke grabs him with the force, pulling his friend on board before he suffocates from the vacuum. Lando awakens shortly after on the ship, thanking Luke for helping him and the studying must be paying off. Luke wished that he had got there quicker though, but something is still wrong with the Force, and he feels ripples within it that mess with his concentration. Holdo meanwhile apologises for getting them all tied up in this, since this was meant to be a vacation for them. Leia tells her friend that if not for her, they would be doing what she does every other day of her life, and at least she got to sit by a pool and go to a fancy party for a little bit, so this is a break in her book. Holdo still doesn't think that this is great since they are trapped on a ship in an unknown part of the galaxy. Leia tells her that she will learn to find the good in it and it's getting to spend time with her friend that matters the most. Lando thinks that this is the saddest thing he's ever heard, but Leia assures him it's all going to be alright. A voice comes over the comms, telling the heroes to give up their weapons otherwise they'll be vented out of the airlock. They are told to toss the weapons out into space as Lando asks Luke to use his lightsaber to cut his way into the ship, but Luke knows that if they did that, he would be spaced in an instant. Leia convinces the team to give up their weapons, telling them to throw them outside. Luke isn't too pleased to be letting go of his lightsaber, but the kid from before comes by with his jetpack, collecting all of the weapons and playing around with the lightsaber. Despite Luke telling him to be careful with it, the heroes are ferried to the nearby colony of Keserat, which Holder knows is the fuel colony they were looking for. Leia calls out to the comm unit, telling their saviors that they are grateful, but they want to understand what this place is and why they can't leave. The voice says that this is no space and the normal rules do not apply there, and for a while they will be what they call news, but in time they will all become olds, and no one has found a way out of no space in 200 years. The being reveals himself, telling the heroes that they better get used to this place since this is their new home now.